bubble sort. Bubble sort is also referred to as sinking sort. It is a simple sorting algorithm that repeatedly steps through the list, compares adjacent elements, and swaps them if they are in the wrong order. To see how elements in a list are reordered, let's see an example on how bubble sort works. To start working with our bubble sort, let's consider the following elements in a collection list. Let's apply bubble sort algorithm to arrange these elements from the lowest number to the highest. And for us to achieve that, bubble sort works by comparing the first two elements, which in this case two and eight, if it finds the left side is smaller than the right side, it will not do any swapping of elements. The next step is to compare the third element with the second element. If the element at the left side is greater than the right side, then swapping is performed. The next step is to compare the third element with the fourth element. If the left side element is greater than the right side element, then it will perform swapping. So three will be placed at left and eight will be placed at the right. The next step is to compare the fourth element with the fifth element. Since the fourth element is less than the fifth element, swapping is not needed. Next is to compare the fifth element with the sixth element. And since the fifth element is greater than the sixth element, then swapping is necessary. The nine will be moved at the right side and the four will be moved at the left side. And finally, we will compare the sixth element with the last element. And since the sixth element is greater than the last element, swapping is necessary. 9 will be placed at the last element, and 1 will be placed at the sixth element. Let's mark the 9 with yellow color to indicate that 9 is already in its proper place. So this will continue to repeat until all elements are in order. Watch the remaining steps for you to see how each element moves from one side to the other until all elements are in the proper order. So there you go, all numbers are now in the right order from lowest number to highest number. So the next thing that we will do is to write an algorithm simulating the process of bubble sort. Okay, so I have already created a new project. So to start with our bubble sort, let's write first a class helper that will contain methods for creating our collection list. And inside of this list, we will write an array that would allow us to insert values for each element that we have on our collection list. Okay, so just below of our class program, we will write here another class and we will name this class C collection. And then we will write uh, private variables. Let's start with our first integer private variable. We will name this it will be in the form of array and we will name this my array 
And then let's create another private variable that will contain the upper limit. So it will serve as determinant for the maximum number of elements that we have for our array. And then the last one, we'll name this active element, or let's just say active index. This will contain the index that we are presently pointing to. Okay, so there you go. And then let's create the constructor. So public and then C collection. So this will be the constructor of our class. And then we will give it a parameter variable named size. This will serve as the size for our array. So we'll initialize our array. We'll now initialize our array to new integer with a size of whatever the size that we have defined in our parameter. And then um, our um, upper limit, the value of our size minus one, because we know that arrays are zero base index. So that's why we have to subtract one. And then we will initialize our active index to zero. And then to continue, let's write our method. The first method would be for inserting items in our collection. So we'll name this insert. And then we'll give this a parameter named item. And then inside of this, we will just state here that my array will contain, active index will contain a value of whatever the item has. And then we will increment the active index by one. And then, and then we will write another method. This time the method will be used for displaying. So we will name this display elements. So let's write a loop here. So while i is less than or equal our upper, then what we will do is just to display it using the console that right line. We will write here our ARR or my ARR to have a value of whatever the value of i. Or you have to include dollar sign here. And there you go. So we have to place this inside of curly brace. Okay. And then after displaying this, we have to write another method that will help us to clear all the items. So we will name this clear. And then we will just write here for i up to up to our upper limit. And then we will just set all elements in our a, my array to have a value of zero. And then set the active element or the active index to zero okay so that's all and then the last one is we give this a try okay on our main method we will create a variable here that would have a type of c collection so let's say my num was to new c collection and then let's try giving this a value of 20 so that the size of our array is 20 and then we will create a random object. Let's say the name of our random is RDM. It's equals to new random object. And then we will state here that my num will contain a value 
coming from our random object. So our random object will randomize numbers between the range of 10 to 90. And we will keep on doing this until all elements contains a value. So we will write here a 4. I'm sorry, we forgot to include control F. Okay, and then, okay, so let's continue then. Um, let's write here, I is less than equal to my num dot the length of num, which basically is not supported right now because we haven't yet defined a property for the length of our C collection. Remember that our minum was created out of C collection and the C collection has no definition for length. So that is why we have to add the length property. Okay, so let's go back. Let's go downward. And on this part, let's write here public int length. And then we will write here, get return upper limit. Okay, there you go. And then let's go back at the top. Okay, there you have it. It is, it is already a valid property. And then we will just add here I++. Let's turn a zero to I. Okay, so there you go. And then, so we have an error here. It states here that C collection cannot apply indexing with C collection. And then let's try continuing. Let's just try to continue writing our codes. And then we will write here my num that display elements and then console that read line okay so there you go so we still have this error so let me rewrite this one my num i plus two RDM that get that next and then we will apply randomize between these numbers we still have this error mm -hmm. okay, let me check this Okay, so I get the point. So we are not dealing with an array. Instead, we are dealing with a C collection. And um, if you can remember, we have this insert method. And then we will insert the randomized number from our C collection. So there you go. So let's try this application. It's going to run. Okay, there you have it. So we are able to randomize numbers between 10 and 90 and these are the numbers and as you can see these numbers are in random orders so what we will do is we will apply bubble sort after applying bubble sort these numbers will be arranged from least to greatest okay so let's start writing our algorithm for bubble sort okay to do that let's go back to our c collection and let's add a new member of our c collection and this will be this will be called bubble sort. And then for bubble sort, you have to write here. You have to write a nested four. The first four block is for our first element. The second four block is for our second element. So let's write here, upper limit. And then for this one, let's use J. 
and then j okay so that's it and then we will just compare if our first element whatever the element oh, i'm sorry this is not our variable if our my arr i is greater than my arr the j then that's the time that we will do a swapping so in order for us to do a swap let's create a temporary variable here an integer temporary variable initialize the zero and then we will name this temple uh, we will give this a temporary variable with a value of the value of our a my arri we can now replace our my arr i with a value of my arr j and then we can now replace our j with our temp So there you go we were able not to swap things here and then after that let's save this and then let's give this a try so at the top we have split the number of elements and then we will write here my num dot bubble sort and then again let's call this display elements if we were able to sort this these uh, elements we have on our array so let's give this a try okay so we cannot really distinguish what is happening inside of our elements so maybe it's better if we can create a separation here so let's try to improve our c collection let's go to our c collection and then Mm, let's create a space here and then next is let's create another space here let's just write console that console that right line just to create a separation between the unsorted and sorted okay so at this portion we have an unsorted element and on this portion we have the sorted elements okay so let's give this a try okay so there you have it so this is the unsorted element so 83 38 down to 86 so af after applying bubble sort it looks now like this so the highest is 89 88 86 85 going down to 16 and we were able to sort it using the bubble sort okay so there you go we're done and before we end everything before we end this video let's have a short summary of what we have done here so the first thing that we have created here is we defined a collection this collection was created with a class and the name and the name of the class is C collection. So we have three private variables, an array variable named my ARR and an upper limit variable that serves as the holder of the size of our array and the active index variable that serves as the pointer for the present element that we are holding. And and then we define a property here the name of the property is length this property here will serve as for exposing the size of our array and then we have another method the name of the method is insert so it will help us to insert value for our elements in our array and as we insert we increment the pointer of our array index and then another method is the display element so it is used for displaying all elements that we have in our array and then the clear for clearing all the elements in our array and then the algorithm for sorting so the name of this algorithm is the bubble sort so we uh, created a temporary variable for the purpose of swapping the value from one element going to another element and then we created two nested loops 
the first loop will serve as a pointer for the for the first element and the second inner loop will serve as a pointer for our second element and we check if the first element is greater than the second element if that happens and then we have to perform swap so this is where swapping happens so next we implemented all of this on our main method so what we did is we created a variable here the name of the variable is my num and that is out of c collection class a custom class and then we created a random object variable the rdm so it will help us to randomize numbers and then as we randomize numbers those numbers are inserted inside of our c collection object which is the my num okay so it randomizes numbers between 10 and 90. then after filling up our array our c collection we displayed all those numbers that we have collected from our random object and then we created spaces here just to separate the unsorted elements from the sorted elements so after that we call the bubble sort so of course bubble sort will sort all the elements from highest to uh, from least to greatest numbers and then we display the result and let's give this a try again if we were able to get the correct answer so what is the smallest number here the smallest number here i guess is 13 and the highest number here is 87 or 88 so 88 is the highest so that is why it is placed at the top and 13 is the lowest so that is why it is placed at the bottom so with the bubble sort we were able to sort the values we have for the elements of our array all right so that's all for this video and then see you in the next lectures